Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another ACE tutorial. Glad to have you. Uh, today is going to be different from the standard tutorial. Instead of showing you how to make a website or uh, jumping into a program like Photoshop, I'm going to show even the least talented and least artistic of, of my viewers how to make art with artificial intelligence. It's a free tool and you might be astounded at the results. We'll dive right in after the intro. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump right in today. I'm going to show you a young man about 35, 36 years old. His name is Ian Goodfellow. Now, in the course of his uh, career, Ian Goodfellow, after uh, getting degrees in computer science and things of that nature, has worked for both uh, Google Brain, uh, Apple, their deep learning systems. Uh, he's, he's done a lot of interesting stuff in computer science. Um, according to an interview with Ian Goodfellow, he was at a friend's going away party when he thought up a new idea called Generative Adversarial Networks, or GANs, G-A-N. What they do is, uh, it's, it's a couple of different artificial intelligence working against and with each other to create new things. And his idea for GANs has exploded into so many areas. So let me show you. Um, an idea of how GANs work is you're going to have two artificial intelligence just working together. One is a generator and one is a discriminator. And what happens is you load like real pictures, uh, such as these cat pictures, real world images into a system. And what happens is a generator or a computer just comes up with random noise or whatever, and it shows it to the discriminator. Now it shows it at the same time that a real world world picture shown to the discriminator and the discriminator learns what's real and what's fake as it goes on it keeps telling the generator what it did wrong so that the generator can get a little more real every single time so it's not just discriminators not just telling it i'm you know this is real that's fake this is real that's fake this is real that's fake it's actually looping back around and telling the generator well Try to make the eyes look a little more this way. Try to make this part of the picture look a little more that way. Eventually, it comes up with um, a fake picture that looks so real that even the discriminator will be fooled. These kinds of systems have been used in all kinds of deep learning. And um, just to give you an idea of what they can do, there's a website called thispersondoesnotexist.com. The person you're seeing on the screen right at this moment is not a real human being. This is not a real photograph. This was put together by a generative adversarial network trying to fake human faces. It was imagined by a program called StyleGAN2. It's, uh, it's part of uh, some people that have worked with NVIDIA. Every time you refresh this web fake human beings picture um, that is not a real woman it looks like anybody you know that's that is complete coincidence every time you uh, refresh you will get another fake person who does not exist who has been generated by this GAN okay now I'm showing you that because Nvidia now has a website that I'll show you the uh, the URL here is NVIDIA English US Research AI Playground. And if you go there, it has some GANs and some AI research in action. One of them is a thing called GameGAN, where they actually had a uh, game watch 50,000 episodes of Pac-Man being played. And now it can recreate Pac-Man's gameplay without actually having a computer game engine. But eh, it can be improved upon. There's things that they're still working on there. There's one called Ganimal. And in Ganimal, what you can do is take a photograph of your animal with a cool expression, like a funny smile or something. And you can put that expression on it, all kinds of other dogs. So if you've ever seen an expression on a particular animal that was really mean and you wanted to see what your animal would look like with a really mean expression like that, Ganimal will actually let you fake it. 
Um, we also have one called image in painting where you can actually go in and paint in what you do not want in the photograph. And when you're done, the new photograph will be without whatever you painted. So you can remove like power poles, power lines, uh, tourists on the beach you didn't want in your photo, such as this one. You'll see as soon as he's done in painting in this animated GIF here, it disappears. You could also get rid of the pail and bucket and all that stuff. But anyway, what we're looking at today is called NVIDIA Gauguin, and it's named after impressionist, post-impressionist painter Paul Gauguin. Um, and what we do is we launch the interactive demo, and I want to tell you the very first thing you want to do is you want to agree to their terms and conditions, which are just basically that you're, you know, going to use it for the purposes they set out for it. So you just check that box. If you don't check that box, everything you do up here is not going to be savable. So it's not going to work properly. It's going to give this little dialog box to say, hey, you didn't do this right. So what I want to point out to you is that we have um, a building list. We have a list of grounds, a list of landscapes, and a list of plants. We also have uh, the new document buttons. If you ever want to go back and hit that, the painting, which allows you to use a paintbrush, you can change the size or the shape of the brush. The fill is like if you draw a circle, but you want to fill in the circle without painting it all in, just hit fill, click, and it'll fill it in. And this is an undo button. Um, not entirely sure what that is. I haven't really used it much. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you right away what is listed here is a sky and an ocean. Now, it doesn't look like it, but when I hit this, it's going to generate, using the GAN, an ocean and a sky. And then you'll see that it's just about photorealistic. Now, across the bottom, you can choose to use these predefined filters, or you can randomly choose one. But what these do is they take this original photograph, and they make it look like the styles in these photos. So, sunsets, and sunsets with just, you know, a, a sun in the picture. Um, post-sunset scene, that sort of thing. We'll remove all of that and go back to essentially what we started with. Now, this is like finger painting, folks. Basically, you could say, I want landscape and I want to paint a mountain. And I want this mountain to go into the distance here, into the foreground. I want to fill all of this, so I'm going to fill those two. Uh, let's say, see, this is still water. We haven't changed that, so that's still water. The sky, we want clouds, so let's let's draw some clouds in here. Well, we're still in the fill, so let's undo. Let's go back to the paint bucket tool, and let's just randomly put in clouds. I'll even I'll even do a cool little thing. I'll draw a circle, and I will draw a square. These are our clouds. Okay. Now watch what happens when I render this. Uh, hello? <laughs> As you can see, it has added uh, what I finger painted and made something almost photorealistic out of it. Now, I mean, we could go further. We could say, let's fill in this cloud. As using the fill tool, fill in that cloud. Hit it again and watch the clouds. And there you go. Or we could just uh, literally... Um, like, uh, what, how do they do that? Sky? Yeah. So we can get rid of these clouds by going to sky and make some new clouds. Let's make a sort of a back and forth zigzag and watch what happens. Kapow. Let's go to water. Okay. And with the water, I want a waterfall right here. Let's render it. And it didn't translate very well because of the way the picture was designed, but you get the basic idea. We'll go ahead and get rid of that, put our mountain back the way it was. Now, uh, you can do so many things that I'm not showing you here. Let's re-render, get our mountain back. Uh, for example, we can choose uh, stone. We could say, Let's put like almost like a stony shoreline right along the side here. And when we render that, we get stony outcropping of rock. 
Okay. Let's say we want to uh, add like fog along the edge of the water. Render that. And it fogs up the entire area, but I'm, I'm going to actually go back and get rid of that. Uh, because I want to remind you that we can use all these styles down here. So we can change the mood of our scene simply by clicking on these. Um, another thing we can do is um, we can download this segmentation map, or we can download our final product. We can also upload things. One of the things I'd like to show you with upload is I'm going to upload a segmentation map I've made earlier. This is input from the other day. And when I hit upload, it's basically a sea scene with rock with some stones out in the water and some zigzaggy clouds. And here's the result that Gauguin paints for us. Now, again, I can change the mood of the scene by clicking these buttons down here, coming up with different things. But rather than do that, what I want to do now is I want to upload a custom style. What I'll do is I'll choose a picture that is totally not related whatsoever to Gauguin whatsoever. I actually did this by going to uh, Photoshop. And in my, in my Photoshop, uh, I actually have a plugin called Pixels. It's free comes from pexels.com and I chose this. If I just click on this, it will create a document with that in it. And I saved that. By the way, uh, I should tell you that yes, you can go to pexels.com and get free stock videos, free stock photos. It's got all kinds of neat stuff. You can do a search for what you want. Like if I search for uh, a car, it will come up with Lots of different car uh, stock photos and videos and that kind of thing. So anyway, what we what we're doing here is we're uh, we're in our our GAN here and we've uploaded that photo that I got free from Pexels, and I'm going to um, use that. What what GAN is going to do is it's going to take the mood, the colors, the softness, whatever it can, and it's going to apply it to this picture. So here we go. How? Pretty cool, huh? Some other uses of, of course, of GANs is not just the, the faces that don't exist, but there's also a thing called Tunify, where someone has taught GANs large eyes, small chins, and the other the sort of flamboyant hairstyles that um, Pixar and animated movies do with people. You can go to Tunify, and since it got overloaded the first time it was released, the guy's got smart, and he's made it where you have to buy your images to make them. Uh, so you buy 10 images, it gives you license keys, you can tell it whether you want the person to be older or younger, smiling or not smiling. And to give you an example of what it can do, here's uh, pictures of a few actors and their uh, tunified pictures made with this GAN. You can actually look for more examples and find other people that are also famous and what their tunify looks like. So there are so many different uses for GANs, but again, uh, you can download, recreate, whatever you like, all of these uh, great things. Now, what I can do is I can go into Photoshop and I can uh, literally pull in something that I've created, such as... Gauguin outfit that we had. Now it's not very big, and of course you might want to might want to increase the size of it at some point. But the point is that let's say you had uh, really good painting skills, you could paint other things in this picture, or if you're really good at things like uh, making composites, uh, you can get a composite of like a horse and rider and put them right on the edge here. The point is, you could take what looks almost real and add more realism to it and make all sorts of cool stuff with it. But anyway, don't ever tell anyone you have no artistic skill because everybody's got some creativity. Everybody has 
the ability to use a computer to make something with finger painting skills that looks almost photorealistic. So you don't have an excuse anymore. Go out and make some art. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you again soon. Zombie Apocalypse.